Recently, there's been a spate of disturbing reports here at home about siblings fighting over property, usually after a parent dies. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how you can avoid that happening to your family. If we haven't met, my name is Natasha Chumia. I'm the CEO of Diaspora Connect. And on this channel, I like to give you who lives abroad information and inspiration on the Zambian real estate market. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about this disturbing trend that we have seen here back home where siblings are fighting over property. So don't go anywhere if you want to learn how you can avoid that happening in your own family. Before I get into all of this content, there are just two quick things that I want to say. First of all, you know that we're on the road to 10,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, then please make sure that you subscribe to our channel and also hit the notification button so you don't miss any of our videos. The second thing I just want to tell you really quickly is that you can join our Facebook group where we're going to be taking this conversation about siblings fighting over property and how to avoid it even further. So we're going to be talking about it even more in our Facebook group. So please make sure you go and join. Okay, so let's get into today's video. So recently it was reported that a woman in Matero discovered that her two brothers were trying to change the names on the property that was left by their father into their names, effectively cutting her out of her inheritance. In another report, a man was suing his siblings because he had spent time and money renovating a property that had been left to all of them as siblings only to later discover that his siblings had been trying to sell that property behind his back. While in Cabanana, a woman was also suing her brother because she discovered that he was building his own house on a property that had been left to all of them as siblings. So this made me question, why are siblings fighting over property? So it seems that these fights usually come about after the death of a parent. And it appears as though the parent did not leave a will. And where there is no will, their wishes are unclear, which leaves the door open to conflict. What an unfortunate situation to find yourself in as a family. So in this video, I want to give six suggestions on how you can avoid this happening to your family and how you can avoid fighting with your siblings over property. So my first suggestion is become familiar with the Interstate Succession Act. Now, when someone dies without a will, they die interstate. That's the legal term for it. And there is a law that governs that situation and it's called the Interstate Succession Act. So you need to become familiar with what this act says because it spells out who gets what and in what proportion. And this can really help reduce on some of these conflicts that we're seeing. So my second point is choose the right administrator. Choose somebody who you know is mature and can act in the best interests of all the beneficiaries. So don't choose somebody simply because of age or seniority. And in fact, sometimes it's better not to even choose a sibling. I know that in our families, we have a tendency to want to choose perhaps the eldest boy or the eldest sibling, but maybe this might not be the right person. So it's important as a family to choose somebody who you can all agree will act with integrity and follow what the legal provisions are in terms of dealing with the estate. My third suggestion is agree collectively on a course of action. Now, like I mentioned, the Interstate Succession Act will spell out how the estate should be dealt with. But really at the end of the day, you've got two choices, whether you're going to keep a property or sell it. There might be a provision of course, where you have to keep a property, but in the event where you can have that leeway, as a family, you can sit down and decide that there's certain assets that you want to keep within the family, okay? so. There are two options, like I said, you either keep or you sell. Now, if you decide to keep a property, decide who's going to stay in that property and also agree how long are they going to be there? How will the upkeep of that property be met? Who's going to pay for that? And don't forget that you also have statutory costs such as ground rent and you may have to pay rates as well. How will those statutory costs be met? 
Again, if you're deciding to keep the property, you may actually decide to rent it out. So you may decide that you want to put in a tenant. Now here is where money gets involved. So you really need to sit down and agree who is going to be collecting the rentals. Where will those rentals go? Do you have a bank account that you can agree those rentals will be deposited in? How will the rental income be distributed and how often? Now remember that a property needs maintenance. So you need to hold back some income for maintenance and repairs and just dealing with general wear and tear. Again, also remember those statutory costs that I talked about. You are going to have to pay ground rent and in some cases you may also have to pay rates. If you're renting out the property, don't forget that there's rental tax. So ZRA is going to want to have a portion of your rental income. The important thing here that I want to emphasize is don't think that just because you've rented out a property, 100% of the rental income is there for you to share. No, it's not. There are expenses and costs that you need to retain and meet from that same rental income. Now, you may find that you have to renovate a property. If you're going to keep it, you may have to do a lot of work on that property. Even if you're going to sell it, you may actually have to renovate that property before you can put it on the market. Now, remember at the start of the video, I told you about the man who was suing his siblings because he had spent time and money renovating a property only to discover his siblings were trying to sell it behind his back. So you don't want this to happen. What you need to do is actually a agree on what renovations need to be done. So get proper quotations, sit down and discuss them as a family so you have an itemized list of the work that needs to be done and estimated costs of how much it will come to. Again, you need to agree on who is going to fund these costs. And because they're putting their own money into what is essentially a family property, how are they going to be reimbursed? So are they going to get the first portion of the rentals? Um, will it be paid back over time? If the property is renovated and sold, are they also going to get a bigger portion to cover the costs that they've had to put in in renovating a property? These are all things where it's better to just sit down and agree upfront. So now let's come to sell. If you decide that you're just going to follow the provisions of the Interstate Succession Act and a property needs to be sold so everybody can get their fair portion, that's well and good. My advice is get a valuation done of the property so that you all have an idea of what the estimated value of that property is. It shouldn't just be based on someone's opinion within the family. Get a professional to give you a good estimate of what the value of that property is. But then having said that, remember that a property will sell for what a willing buyer is able to pay for it. So don't get stuck with that number in your head and say, we're not going to move unless we get this much for it. Remember that the market is fluid and at the end of the day, uh, a sale happens between a willing seller and a willing buyer. When it comes to selling the property, please, please, please do get a lawyer to represent you. I know I, I hop on and on about this guys, but it's so important because in order to sell a property that falls within someone's estate, there has to be a legal process. There has to be a court process. This is not something that should be done in a casual way. You need a proper legal representative to take you through the process correctly. On top of that, the legal representative is representing all of you as beneficiaries. In fact, they can receive the proceeds of sale and make sure that those funds are distributed in the way that they should be in compliance with the law. And it's so much better to have an independent professional person who can do this on behalf of all of you. Now, Coming back to my suggestions of how you can avoid fighting over property, my fourth suggestion is to hold regular meetings with the administrator. Now, I think this is where a lot of people tend to fall down. They kind of just leave things in the background and they don't really have any follow up. It's really important that at the start of the process, you're able to agree on how often you should be meeting and the updates that you'll be getting from the administrator so that all of you can be kept in the loop, especially if some of you are far away in the diaspora, because you might feel already there's that disconnect because of distance. And you may feel that maybe your siblings who are here on the ground 
ground know more about what's going on. So in order for all of you to be on the same page, make sure that you agree to have regular meetings where the administrator can update you on how the affairs of the estate are being handled. So my fifth suggestion is if you really can't resolve these issues, then go to the office of the Administrator General. Now I know many people may or may not have heard about this office, but this is a department that falls under the Ministry of Justice. And their role is to oversee the administration of deceased people's estate. So they have dealt with many conflicting families and many grieving families. If you feel that you just can't come to any sort of agreement, then it may be helpful to seek their advice and their guidance. So lastly, my last point, point number six on how you can avoid these squabbles is speak to your parents about leaving a will. Now, I know as Zambians, we don't like to talk about death. But there's that saying that there are only two things in life that are certain taxes and death we are all unfortunately going to die so have the courage to have this conversation with your parents and even with yourself it's so important to leave a will so that everybody's clear on what the wishes of the deceased are so if you can sit down with your parents let them put their wishes down on paper i know some families where the parents have even distributed property while they were still alive just to avoid any conflicts in death again like i said it's a courageous discussion but one that can really help you to prevent so much conflict in the future so the question of today is have you encountered such conflicts in your family and how did you deal with it let's share let's learn from each other like i said at the start of our video we do have a facebook group and if you'd like this conversation to go a bit further then please join us in our facebook group you're going to see a, a picture of the facebook group because they are fake facebook groups so make sure that you're requesting to join the right group and i can't wait to see you in there where I'm going to give you more insights on how you can avoid the situation happening in your family. All right, so I hope you found the information in this video useful. If you did, then please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we really do want to hit 10,000 subscribers. Hit the notification button so that you don't miss any of our videos. And please share this video with just one other Zambian in your community who you know will find this equally useful. Otherwise, we can't wait to connect with you on social media. We love to chat with you there and it's bye for now. This made me question, why are siblings fighting over property? Well, it seems that these conflicts usually arise after the deceit. So choose somebody who you know is going to do a good job in dealing with the estate of the administrator. I'm so close. <laughs> So choose somebody who you know can handle the estate with maturity. <laughs> Remember at the start of the video, I talked about the case where the lady, or oh, was it the man? Oh, the man. <laughs>